live now yeah uh -huh. Hello. Yeah, it's live now. Great. Hello. So, welcome yeah. to Guest Speaks by Center for Artificial Intelligence and Language Processing at DAIICT, co-hosted by ACM Gandhinagar Chapter and IEEE. We are very happy to start this maiden episode with a man who made uh, the first Indian internet company, if I can say. He, he was the founder and the current chairman and chief executive officer uh, of Rediff.com, a man who chaired the board of governors of IIM Calcutta for two five-year terms. He has served as the chairman of the Government of India Ministry of Information Technology Working Group on Internet Governance and Purification. He has served as a member of the Central Advisory Board of Education of the Government of India and co-drafted the current five-year plan on EQUIP, which is Education, Quality, Upgradation and Inclusion Program. Mr. Ajit Balakrishnan. Welcome, Ajit. Thank you. Uh, we acknowledge your contribution to frame the education policy in India. And EQUIP, the, the latest draft, is something that you came up with, where you kind of correlated curriculum gap and unemployment. Uh, What's the gap? Uh, how to bridge it? If you can let us know something. Yeah. 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 Shall I run you through some slides now, or shall I? Oh, sure, speak? sure. That would be wonderful. That would I, be I wonderful. have got five or six slides. I, I just wanted to. This is what I presented to all yeah. the powers that 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 be. Okay. Yeah, this you was, are. Uh, last year, and the audience for this was a very illustrious group of all the educationists in India. Um, change the slide, please. This is part of the national education policy. Let's change the slide, please. Ooh. Yeah, it was, there are 10 working groups in it. You'll find my name in the group seven, but um, all, all of us, about 50 to 60 of us were working very hard to put the national education policy together. And uh, you'll find many of your former colleagues and so on inside here. Uh, change slide, please. Next slide. And uh, Next slide, yeah. You know, we just, today when you get deeply involved, oh, no, no, go back, go back. Now when you, this slide gives you a perspective. In, in the year 2020, we are very obsessed with computers and internet. Uh, but I just want to point out to you, it's one of the earlier waves of technology have also had similar effects on Indian society, world society. For example, when you know the factory system came in textiles and together with steam, uh, there was a lot of uh, child labor problems, etc. But affordable clothing was the end result in the mid 19th century. When steel rails and ships came, it meant uh, you know, urbanization and world trade was very much easy, um, but it also created slave trade and colonialism. Now, when electricity and plastics came, uh, you know, it meant affordable polyester trousers and shirts, fertilizers, pharma, etc. But it also destroyed the Bombay textile industry, the collapse of the Bengal jute industry when polypropylene was invented and led to Naxalism in Bengal. Not many people know the connection between these. Uh, you know, and with, now together with computers and internet, uh, we are coming into the age of hopefully One second. Please go back. Uh, but there are chances that many jobs in legal and medical and insurance may disappear. So each of each of these technological waves create, uh, you know, create uh, opportunities as well as problems. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Uh, but what I did a study as, as part of the education policy, 
Uh, look at IIM CAT exam results. Not many people have this data. Earlier, and I, I myself was one of a student of the IIM Calcutta in 1969-71. At our time, only students from the top kind of English medium schools would make it into, you know, into the IIM entrance exam. Today, in a recent data that I have, you find that you know the uh, state board people students are as equally as common in I, I, the main IIMs, IIM Calcutta, Ahmedabad, etc as CBSC and IISC students. So you can see that India has democratized its uh, system and students scoring over 95 percentile uh, in the IIM CAT exam uh, now come ac from across all board types. So that's, you know, and many of them come with barely any knowledge of English when they come. Next. Next slide, please. Yeah, but I think it's again what we need, oh, you jump two slides. One back. Yeah, you know what the internet is and the web is brought yeah, two big movements. One is dematerialization, where print, paper, plastic film is becoming digital uh, that we have seen in media, the effect of this in media first. Uh, disintermediation, where many layers in the distribution chain are getting broken. Uh, for example, wholesalers, distributors, and so on. Um, in many insurance, share broking, etc. Uh, this is starting to cause a lot of angst in the distribution community because in India, about 30 to 45 percent of people are employed in some kind of a distribution business, you know. And the third thing that we are seeing is big vertical entities like banks are getting disaggregated, like deposit taking banks into cash uh, using banks and so on. Many of the existing banks have started to collapse already, as you can see. So it is very important to manage this whole transition that we are going to go through. Next. Yeah, in the Indian education system is very much, uh, there is no vocational specificity. It's very much like borrowed from the U UK and US. We have a general skill system. There is no skill formation. It's very superficial at the undergraduate level. Uh, skills are learned only in advanced places, unlike, for example, Germany, where it's a very workplace-based skill system. Uh, and this, I think, it's very important as part of the political economy. And when online uh, teaching starts, I, I personally would like to see it to break this whole chain where, uh, you know, advanced skill-based systems are available only at the postgraduate level. We need to change it. Next, please. Next slide. Yeah, also keep in mind uh, reality of India. This is the, uh, you know, again, government data. You can see there are in India just 30 million families which can be classified as managerial and earning more than 13,000 rupees household income. And there are just 50 million professional technical uh, families earning 13,000 or more. The vast majority, for you look go from the bottom, there are 420 million families in farmers, fishermen, hunters, loggers, earning 4,000 rupees household income per month. Many in informal workshops and transportation, 320 million. Um, carpenters, masons, tailors, 60 million. And hawkers, peddlers, street vendors, 135 million. The reason I presented this to uh, all my other fellow members of the large committee, and including at some stage Mr. Modi himself, was that it's very important that when we look at artificial intelligence, deep learning, machine learning, we must think of ideas which serve across this thing, not just for the managerial and, and professional groups. We must somehow make the lives of fishermen, hunters, uh, carpenters, masons much easier. So that, that's part of what I, you know, do. Now, the other, other problem is in India, there is no uh, funding available if a person wants to do a startup. Uh, unless you live in Bombay and Delhi and maybe Bangalore and to some extent Calcutta, you, you cannot, either you have to be from a business family where your business uncles will fund you. But a typical person who comes with a bright idea and is a shop assistant father or a taxi driver father, there is no equity funding available uh, to start. So we need to provide some kind of a uh, uh, you know, angel investment system in India. The so-called VC investors are all sons of rich people in India whose parents 
paid some 50 lakhs to send them to Harvard and Stanford and so on. And they come get jobs in private equity firm and come back to Bombay, Delhi and Bangalore and consort with their like-minded people. So we need to democratize the angel funding system. And I had proposed that, you know, one portion of it is we have already created the limited liability company, limited partnerships act that has been done. But the tax law is such that if I, as a relatively well-off person, puts in, let's say, 50 lakhs into, uh, into a company, which is a limited liability, uh, not company, limited liability partnership, I cannot adjust the losses of that partnership against my income. The result that I have no incentive as a well-to-do guy to invest in startups. So they, we need to fix that from the tax point of view. Okay, next. Next slide. Yeah, I, I think many people think that India, you know, uh, government policy can't make any difference to all this. I wanted to point out that, uh, you know, whenever you talk of our Indian IT services miracle, uh, including last week when Mr. Kohli died, etc., everyone, you know, you know, you know, gives claims to all the people who are known to be billionaires, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The man who created it is a person called Dr. Sheshagiri, who is a civil servant, scientist. Okay, he he, what he did, and I, I was running a company called PSI Data Systems in Bangalore, and we were building Unix boxes. We are talking of 1985. 1985. I was the MD of the company, and Sheshagiri and others um, created tenders so that uh, there was an incentive for all our companies to work in Unix relational database system. Oracle at that time was new when they first, when I encountered them, uh, you know, they had only 16 employees, one six, okay? In 1985, 86. And, and uh, Unix, COBOL, because of Chasha, you know, there's a nationalized bank's computerization uh, policy where you had to bid. And Dr. Sheshagiri ensured that unless uh, you, you could show knowledge of Unix, RDBMSs, and COBOL, you could not bid. So because of that, all of India's uh, five or 10,000 programmers, in which I include myself, quickly moved on to Unix, RDBMSs, COBOL, away from the non-standard systems. And then when Y2K happened, uh, we were all ready. Everyone jumped into it. And, and you could, India could win uh, a big part of the Y2K movement. So what I... I pointed this slide out particularly because the Dr. Sheshagiri's vision uh, of in, in enforcing standards during the bank computerization movement that led to the Indian IT services movement. Next. Uh, I think at the moment there is a big movement inside the internet, which is not the Google and others are not hyping it up, but the underlying movement again pushed by Tim Berners-Lee is so-called solid web standards. Uh, I would urge you all to have a look at it if you haven't already. And when you launch your education site, make sure that it follows a solid uh, standard. Next. Yeah, and this is a key part of our rec my recommendation was that you know data science and machine learning is no longer going to be something which only computer science guys need to know. It has become like physics, chemistry, and basic arithmetic. So we need to, whether you are doing bioinformatics, which means you need people who know biology plus computer science plus statistics, or if you're doing digital marketing, then you need to know marketing plus statistics plus computer science, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you need, uh, you know, the at, at least an R programming language plus statistics to all courses, including law and MBBA students. Okay, so this is very, very important. Otherwise, India will be left behind. This has been introduced as a subject in the Bachelor of Degree Digital Vocation Diploma holders. And I, I propose to the MHRD Education Ministry that be taught within one year courses. Okay, next. Next. Yeah, I, I think the tax intensive for LLP firm investors I pointed out. It is very important. Um, I, I think, uh, please join me in pushing government to implement it. Um, next. Next slide. Yeah, I think this was a post-national internship platform. 
when you are creating your uh, own platform, uh, please try to bake it on the solid framework. And apart from that, plan for network effects. It's very important. Network effects in this era is what economies of scale was in the industrial era. So you must create all these network effects that I pointed out. I, I recommend it to government that they do it under AICTE, but uh, they are fighting shy of it. They, they, look, we don't have the internal resources to do it. So they have not added on it, but maybe you guys can take this lead and, and put together a platform which brings uh, all kinds of people, not just directly, but indirectly people who are on Swayam and NPTEL and job sites and edtech providers and all come onto your platform to learn. So if you have the ambition, I'm more than happy to help you guys do this as well. Huh? Okay, so and use it on a solid platform so that student data is not misused. Okay, next. Yeah, you can, I've made a list of all the things to do, but in government is, I told them, let's go implement it in six months, but implementation has not yet started, but these are all the things that you needed to do. Uh, list the machine learning topic, define curriculum, architecture as a platform, define amendment to section 10, let's make it easy. So I think governments and MHRD, the secretaries keep changing often, so they have not started implementing it, but uh, that, that's it. No? Thanks, thanks. That's the end of my presentation. You can take that up. Yeah. So this is what I presented to you know all the powers that be in India one year ago. They're still digesting it. They all agree to it in principle, but implementation is something else. No? Yeah. I hope that was useful and interesting. To you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, quite insightful indeed. And uh, that answer... Partly my question that what is the gap in curriculum and what you try to say that a bioinformatics uh, taker, a subject who is doing bioinformatics should do biology, then statistics and computer science. So how many yeah. such tailor-made curriculum available in our country currently so that we can offer data science or rather we can amalgam data science to every component, even in humanities, yeah. in social science, right. in economy. So, I mean, how do you think, I mean, this can be, how, we have how to would define it unfold? A, we have to define a curriculum, but my personal ambition is to write a machine learning textbook for eight standard students. I wish I could take three months off and do it. Uh, and in 22 languages. I must tell you one other thing. Inside inside our company, um, which is really, we don't boast about it, but we have some of the best guys have been and. and Professors at IIT Bombay and I'll call me and say, this is a really good kid taken. Then we hired the toppers. Um, but the brightest, the two brightest young people in our office today who are working computer science guys, one is a woman who doesn't speak one word of English. We have oh. a very, very, very successful part of readit.com. It's called Money Viz, it's a stock market site. We provide real time, really excellent stuff. And so several million users. The woman who runs it does not speak one word of English. You should see the uh, meeting when she and I participated. Uh, having grown up in Kerala, I don't speak one word of Hindi. But you know, when we interact, she speaks in hin Hindi or Gujarati, and then I reply back in English. And outstanding person. Now, the other of the top three, the other one is another 25-year-old computer science kid from a uh, no-name polytechnic in Bombay and who still lives with his mother in one of the vast slums of Bombay. Last six months ago, he joined us. It's a pleasure to work. So the real talent in India today does not come in the English speaking types. Huh? Really, people like us who went to, I went to something called St. Michael's Anglo-Indian School, etc. Thankfully, we had a very good mathematics teacher, priest, I've been very lucky. But I know my friends, children and grandchildren are all in Bombay posh schools. They're not teaching mathematics well enough. So the kids, you in India, you'll find talent coming from every part of India, not just the English-speaking subs and names of children. We watch out for that. And I hope so, your uh, course, your course, I hope, is in Indian languages. Not, you know, I hope you'll offer it at least in Hindi, Gujarati, Marathi, that five, seven at least. Yeah, yeah that, that's a English. great suggestion. Yeah. That's a great suggestion indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, I mean, how successful you are, do you think that when you sit on the other side of the table for recruiting, 
that since there is a craze, you know, I mean, even you wrote it different places that uh, Indians are very fond of foreign stuffs, so foreign degrees. <laughs> so I mean, how you how you convince the the committee that no, we can take someone who doesn't know English, that doesn't matter here. They, you know, they looked at me skeptically. You know, I could see the doubt in their faces. But I know from past experience that uh, some of these ideas that, you know, recognize the talent in India, we have to go and do it on our own. Don't base, you know, so I try my best in whatever forum they invite me to say that there's outstanding talent in this country. Do not forget we are the country who invented the decimal system. Okay. And I, I right. don't think many people know that, you know, the uh, in the ninth century, there was an entity in Baghdad uh, called the mm -hmm. House of Learning. You know about that, do you? Do you guys know? The word algebra comes from the Arabic word al-jabr, which means to balance. And the book right. which promoted it is written by Al Al Algorismi. Mr. Algorismi, and he is from Iran, and uh, it is from his name that the word algorithm is decided. And this is in the eighth or ninth century, and uh, in a house. Of, and his book is, um, you know, the uh, Aljabar, the Hindu art of reckoning. But Indians were called Hindus those days. Yeah? That's why. Right. And he took algebra, and when the Ottomans invaded Spain, okay, they took it there in the twelfth or thirteenth century. The Algorismi's book which was translated into Latin, okay? And the House of Wisdom was operating in Baghdad at a time when I am fond of saying this, when by wild beasts were roaming where Oxford and Cambridge and Stanford are today. They were wild beasts, there no, nobody there. So we come from a country with very, very deep roots in mathematics, very deep roots. Great. And, and, don't, so and don't look for the English medium kids only. Please open this to others. Please. Yeah. So, uh, so coming back to this, what you already said that uh, uh, opening in mother language or in Indian languages, uh, offering courses in Indian languages, as you said that you plan to write a book for class eight kids on machine yeah. learning. So you will be explaining uh, what is clustering in in Malayalam. Maybe. Yeah. Or, or yeah. in Bengali, as the case may be. Yeah. Or in absolutely. Bengali. We have to tell them, and yeah. understand. They will get it in within one second. I'm telling you. And I, I, one of the things I did is there's a school near where I live, where you know it, where it's, it's a small school where only the children about, you know, I don't know whether you know Kolaba. Next to my bill, how home is Sasun Dog. A lot of fishermen, Muslim fishermen. Their children go to this school. So mm -hmm. about three, four years ago as an experiment and went and taught them algebra in class seven and eight. You should see the kind of intelligence with which they picked it up. You know, if uh -huh. they were my children, we would continue nurturing them and then they will top IIT exams and top IIM and become president of Citibank and so on. But these poor babies, you know, their parents make them go to work after class nine. So India is such a country. Talent you can find anywhere. It is impossible not to see it. Hmm? So how to tap this? Uh, what the new education policy is is framing to tap this? And you mostly know, in vernacular or in, mother language. In, in, in India, the, all of these uh, uh, education policy and fiscal policy are statements of intention. You know, it, it, you know, implementation is left to us as individuals. That's, that's a reality you must face because they, all the civil servants who are secretaries who are part of making the policy get transferred next to animal husbandry and you know and from there on to forest management and so on. You know, they're not there long enough. But institutions like yours, you can do that. I think uh, focus on pro providing deep learning and machine learning techniques to undergrad students. And uh, we'll say let's all work together to make sure it's introduced at the state level into subjects. You know? So I think uh, there's, there's a lot of work to do. I wish we had more time than 24 yeah, hours true. a day. You know, I wish, yeah. True. Okay, so, uh, well, I mean, at this point, maybe I, I can just play the role of uh, devil's advocate, kind of. Yeah. So where, where I can say that um, all AI systems are as good as uh, its training data is. And yeah. 
you you can't uh, get the insight uh, in any ai algorithm say for example you can't discover relativity using ai i mean something which is not apparent something which is not historically encoded yeah. you, you can't get you can see so yeah. i mean why do human race will think this as a real threat i think partly because uh, all of us who practice with deep learning and machine learning um, mm -hmm. hype hype it up you know hype it up uh, i don't do it i i refuse to use even the word artificial intelligence somebody brings it up i'll say okay no, just change it let's you use the word machine learning so it, it is normal it is normal in the beginning of a it's called the hype cycle you know there's some management consulting firm even has drawn a picture of a hype cycle so mm -hmm. ai is in a hype cycle uh, deep learning or machine as the correct name is not settled yet you know Mm -hmm. uh, don't mm -hmm. forget when chemistry first appeared, a lot of hype came about it. People said we will convert gold, we will manufacture gold out of thin air. All kinds of claims made. Then it settles down after five, ten years into being a serious science. So I think machine learning is in that process. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of work is going on, but it has a, it has a it will have a breakthrough effect in making services affordable to the common man. I agree. I agree. Me, I, I uh, agree. You know, yeah, but uh, but you but you tell me, you see, uh, any other uh, cases? If if I just uh, if I see if I compare machine learning with other science or other mm -hmm. classical science, uh, machine learning don't have any axioms on the first place. You, you cannot evaluate it the way you used to evaluate your classical science. Suppose you have a news recommendation system, and, and you say it's, it's a good recommendation system, but it's a bad recommendation system. You don't have a precise way. You can only empirically evaluate it to, to a certain extent, and if you are satisfied, you, you are happy with it. So, I mean, can we really call it a science? I, I think uh, as practiced by 5-10% of machine learning people, it is a science. There is lots of hype too. But don't get worried about that. Every science, I'm a student of history as well. So every science, when it first emerges, oh God, they are hype it up to make it popular. Everyone. The things which are claimed for physics, if you go and read the physics books of the time, you think, oh shit, what were they trying to forget? Everybody believed it. You know? So I, I don't get worried about this. So science in the early stage of its evolution. And okay. those of us who are serious about it, keep emphasizing, don't call it AI, et cetera. So that keeps people back up, you know. So, but unfortunately, a correct name is not emerged. But you, so you start a center, what would you call it? That's a problem. Yeah. Today, deep, today, deep learning, machine learning uh, seem to be, you know, uh, there's a challenge there. But I think, uh, uh, but I think almost every week or month new ideas are coming up and uh, you know it will start I think we must find applications which really help humanity and then things will change okay uh, there's no point in wasting it on trying to guess stock prices the next month and all uh, waste of time I think in my humble view try and you know let's say oh I, I must tell you this fantasy I have and I can share it only with fellow tech guys like you there will be throughout Bombay hopefully in five years time, ATM like machines. No, if so, so two traders have a legal battle, they go and put 100 rupees inside and each person oh. speaks his case for three minutes and the ATM will oh. print out, print out a decision. This is wow. my fantasy. <laughs> this is my, this is my fantasy. Okay. So that means uh, today what happens, I've seen some local shopkeepers, if they can't get a resolution, they mm -hmm. would, one guy will say, I'll go and hire a gunda to beat you. And he sometimes does. But if mm -hmm. they go to this, you know, with this kind of dispute of 5,000 rupees, which is being owed and not paid, in Bombay and in El Sueto, in Bombay, we have got something called the Court of Small Courses. Ah. Okay, where you go and file for mm -hmm. amounts below X thousand rupees. Your case will be heard after 11 years. Oh, yes. So, yeah, so if I'm an ambitious trader, I'll hire a gunda to beat you and get the money, you know. Why would yes, I go to court? That's quicker. 
That's so quick. You yeah. need, yeah, you need a, uh, my ATM, of course, is an exaggeration, but something like that, very quick and just decisions. Okay, we need that. Um, uh, we need that similarly in medical diagnosis. We have a very, most people, you know, my father was a doctor, my grandparents yeah. were doctors, so grandmother and oh. grandfather. So I come yeah. from a doctoral house. But I do know that 90% of doctors after five years of practice stop updating themselves. They don't okay. because if medical science is also, you need to spend five hours a reading before you do that. And so they okay. are based on guesswork and some. So you need diagnostic tools based on machine learning, which will help them and give them later stuff. And as offer it as a tool. You know, offer uh -huh, it as uh -huh. a tool so that their life is not destroyed, but life become faster. Similarly, judges can make decisions faster uh, uh -huh. so that life speeds up and people will, you know, the average fellow common man will benefit from these sciences. That is my sincere prayer. Okay. So, I mean, just adding to this, this concern and fantasy, I can just read a, a, a short text which I have right now. The class action mode of litigation is a uniquely American practice. It is filed by one or several named plaintiffs on behalf of a proposed class, which may consist of a group of individuals or business entities that have suffered a common injury. And there are some more explanation of it. Finally, the author wrote, once a class action suit in admitted into court, the court appoints a lead plaintiff whose lawyers then proceed to question the defendants and take their depositions. The process can take years. It can take decades. I hope you, you, you can identify. I mean, it happened with you, actually, yeah, when you correct. find yourself yeah, when, here. Yeah, I recounted that case. What happened when we yeah. did an IPO, uh, eight months later, the implosion on Wall Street happened. You know, it mm -hmm. was called the you know dot com crash, and when it crashed, yeah. there's a whole bunch of people who filed a suit saying, uh, you know, you misled us, etc. Nothing. In the end, the court dismissed all the suits, but all lawyers were rich by about three, four hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> and in America, in America, the disease is even more. I tell my lawyer and judge friends in New York, say, guys, mm -hmm. don't change your system here. What is this? <laughs> yeah, I recounted that story in that book that I wrote called The Wave Rider. Yeah, so but do you in, think in, that, in India, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, do you think that the real corporate house, not the Panwalas, is going to subscribe to the ATM that you were suggesting, your magical ATMs? You know, what or, we can do, do is they might there may be complex cases which require deep thinking and cogitation. No question mm -hmm. about it. But mm -hmm. typically what happens if you do an ABC analysis. 95% of the disputes, civil disputes, are for small amounts and which people need quick answers for. You'll ah, see, okay. uh, you analyze, okay. you get rid of the, complete that quickly. So mm -hmm. talented lawyers and talented judges can concentrate on some unique, complex cases. You know, mm -hmm. that, 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 that's, that's there. It's not that you will make them all unemployed, no, not at all. You know? Like in all sciences, there are certain things that you have. It, a toothbrush was invented, so we, we don't need to go to dentist every day. You just clean your mouth and have a toothpaste. So we have to contribute in that area to make small disputes quickly go. Yeah, but my personal experience is while while talking with the lawyers, I mean, it's a common apprehension that maybe the some someday an artificial lawyer will take away all their job. And, and you know, I mean, as I said, that AI cannot, is heavily dependent on data, for example, machine yeah, learning. Yeah, if we can, yeah. And if we don't get enough annotated legal data to train our AI algorithms, how can yeah. we actually generate a good summarizer or a good question answering system? No, I think what you should do as an institution, mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not in the MHRD committee, but we could have got you a 20 crore grant from MHRD to make sure download mm -hmm. the entire Supreme Court database, annotated okay. as, as uh, you know, and annotated in a way that people can use that as a reference. And so the people who want to build machine learning systems can use their open source annotated system. Working along the lines, if you know, SPACI, the SPACI is a new annotation system 
yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. we could be using something spacey like thing for the indian database indian legal Judiciary. database correct yeah and i'm i'm willing to donate half a day of my free time every week to fly to ahmedabad work with you guys and on some oh, wonderful things. wonderful so we need That to do something tool, actually yes, uh, yes and then and keep it in the open uh, in an open environment Source. so that people all over india can experiment you know, what does right. it cost it, it, it costs nothing it, you don't need 20 crores you need less than 5 crores to get it done uh, and uh, so and once you go to uh, go down to the high court level but that is where the largest backlog is you know at yeah. the high court level but these are important things to do and by doing this a machine mm. learning will prove that it is a science like medicine Yeah. You know, it is you now. It is that it, that is for the benefit of the common person. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. that uh, we need to do things like that. You know. We have to. We have. To. Maybe we'll make a. Uh, we'll start with ask Mr. Modi. Can we do this for Gujarat High Court first? So oh that, sure. You know, Actually, he may Gujarat say High yes. I want. I want. Correct. He'll say I want Gujarat to be number one. He'll say we will help you make it number one. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> in fact uh, you will be happy to know that gujarat high court did something very interesting and perhaps pioneered in the country they started putting all their live sessions recorded in youtube yeah yeah okay. so you can just see a 4 5 hours continuous proceedings correct, correct. happening with multiple judges uh, lawyers and parties now i Very did good. a small experiment i converted uh, those video recordings i transcribed mm -hmm. them using this google speech apis and and the quality of transcription since high court are uh, i mean the language is english in high court and and yeah. and supreme court also so the quality of transcription is not very bad and i can tell you that the entire transcription of that 4 5 hours recording i mean the video session yeah. is an immense wealth to train a system that Absolutely. if this is an argument coming what is the counter argument and what yeah. are the other diffusionaries and parties okay, okay. So it, it's a very fascinating data but yes i mean uh, yeah. we have yeah, to look I mean, for some funds to... uh, we could make start with gujarat that you are lucky to have your, your guy as the prime minister so we say <laughs> let us make you know deploy machine learning and again make sure that and gujarat there's a lot of trade and business going on yes so yes yes our goal is to make trade dispute be resolved within the day not can't go oh, beyond wonderful wonderful something wonderful. like that and we work very hard and get it done and the rest of india can use the algorithms for them of yeah. course of course of course exciting things uh, to do huh? yeah 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 <laughs> exciting yeah, yeah. things to do <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean thank you thank thanks for this uh, insight and and uh, propositions so i'm uh, moving on as as we were talking about this this the judiciary and ai how ai and judiciary can help each other so judiciary yeah. can help ai with data and ai can help judiciary with speed and yeah. Uh, yeah i mean low cost delivery yeah. of, of of things yeah. because i heard in one statistic say that if a crime happen it takes on an average about 7 to 10 months to put the charge sheet in place absolutely yeah correct so so that is on the lower bound there can be upper bound also it's a very yeah. skewed distribution so even it can take years to to frame the charge sheet and and yeah. following things and also the other problem that we uh, often heard from our lawyer friends but could not again for the for the dearth of data and other things we could not think of a system in place is drafting so when you do legal drafting yes. uh, the main thing you need to find is the right citation of the statute yeah. or the precedents that had already yeah. happened so yeah. had there been a machine that can identify these are the and rank these are the probable precision my uh, precedents yeah. a case and the statute you you can That's make right. writing so more make, fast make, make the first draft quickly correct yep in a matter yep. in a matter of 30 40 seconds and then the human right. lawyer can embellish it yeah yeah maybe when you propose these things in practice they will support you more than by saying we we'll put an atm like machine Wow! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great, great. So these are some of the projects yes. that uh, that we are wondering if we can work yes. on. Yes, absolutely exciting. There are so yeah. many exciting things to do in law and medicine and things of that kind. You know? yeah. Yes, yes, yes. 
and both these law and medicine both have their own lingua so yeah, we have to yeah. train the system on that lingua only yes it, it and it's unique an, to and unique to india because uh, many of these terms used in india in law and medicine in the, in mm -hmm. the in the common language of people and physicians and local lawyers we must train mm -hmm. them on those words you know a lot of it is natural language right. processing a lot of it is that right 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 going to wikipedia data set which is what spacey does gives you some yeah. answers but not not all you know. true true train them true. on indian language data sets yeah. yes 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 and here actually this indian language uh, power can be captured yeah. Yeah, we, we, and we need to very much, very much to help them. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, thank you. So, uh, yeah, yeah, if you have uh, any uh, any comment on no, this. No, no, Father? I think, no, I thank you very much for giving me an opportunity. No, I, I still uh, have one, one, one more question for you. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, and the last one. So, so basically, uh, as we started with uh, in our internal discussion and also later, and as you are a big proponent of online education, and uh, just a, a quick question that can help to put things into perspective. Uh, can I get a mechanical engineering degree online? Um, you need, okay, the short answer is yes, but you know, in every part of learning, as you know more than I do, that with chemistry, physics, and in particularly the engineering trades, you would need some practical experience. Okay, so you not only do you do teach them online, but help implement what I call that internship portal. You know, make sure mm -hmm. that after that they get internships in reasonable quality companies where they can observe how these things are done. Uh, mm -hmm. People often ask me, you know, why? How do I I am particularly the top three, four of them, including mm -hmm. Amcal. You know, they have all students are placed within last day, it was within three days opening of the placement. It's not any magic. 80% of placements go to pay people who have done summer projects in that company. Mm -hmm. so, you go, so this company has already seen it and decided to hire you. So mm -hmm. similarly, we need an internship portal, which will... Mm -hmm. And it doesn't happen automatically. We have to do some missionary work, uh, encourage companies to take these uh, kids, uh, you know, who have done your course, uh, so that they can get some practical experience. Obviously, some bright ones will jump with the opportunity, do well in interviews, and get into, uh, you know. So I, I think there must be an internship portal so that they can do a couple of months internship uh, if uh -huh. it's a two-year course. Uh, uh -huh. Maybe at least one month each year as an internship where they can go and see all this is in, in action somewhere. It's very important, very important. Uh -huh. you know? uh -huh. So I think uh, otherwise they come from backgrounds where you don't know what is going on. In my own case, when I did my summer project in, in ITC in Calcutta, Kidarpur, or the factory, you know, that's the first time I've seen a factory in my life. When I was no. son and grandson of doctors, we don't even go near a factory. So inside the factory, I was observing them for one month, but at two months, and I think I really understood what are the the project was an operations research those days. Huh? Uh -huh. You know, how do you apply operations research? Then I saw it, I could spot it. Uh -huh. you know? and then I went to the uh -huh. ITC office and on uh, Chaurangi, when uh -huh. people drew people drew a organization chart when I was 19 and joined the first year at IM, I thought that represented people sitting on different floors. Uh -huh. you know? I didn't know. How would I know it? <laughs> so, so let's go back to our own childhood and see yep. these very otherwise very bright kids. Mm -hmm. I'm the mm -hmm. same person who did not know what an organization chart is, and he thought it was different, you know, the floors of a building. Uh, mm -hmm. I could score ninety nine percent in any mathematics sex you gave me. So that is true even today. So these sure. kids need an internship too. They need internship, mm -hmm. and that is. An internship, you have to work very hard to place them. It, you know, it won't happen automatically in the beginning. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I think uh, combining. So those... how how uh, an ideal data science curriculum, in your mind, it should be including this internship component or something? Say a, a two-year. I, I think master program. I think we'll have to talk. Uh, let, let's at the moment keep it contained with Gujarat so they make it handleable. 
we have to okay. talk to the Gujarat University folks and say, look, to make these young people who pass through Gujarat University um, uh, succeed in life, whether they are BCom or whether they are big BCom more so because many of parental mm -hmm. Gujarati parents put their children into BCom type thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Let us introduce a machine learning component to the BCom thing. It doesn't matter if they have not done mathematics before. We will make sure that there is mm -hmm. a basic stats being taught. So mm -hmm. in a in a BCom course, they have maybe six months of everyone gets introduced to machine learning without frightening them, you know? Okay. Basically, okay. Statistics, statistics is the key, you know, so, and a little mm -hmm. bit of R, R type programming. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when it's introduced, so I think mm -hmm. that's a breakthrough. But when they go in for an interview to Bombay to get, they'll all get jobs overnight because uh, people in oh. banks and institutions are looking for trainees who know be, become become us that kind of thing, plus a little bit of machine learning so they can act. Even in in, in one part of my company are full of journalists, about 15, 20 of them. Now today, journalism is becoming, apart from earlier it meant knowing English writing skills. Today, data science is needed to create interesting charts, you know, which show the story fully. Uh, you know, there are graphics which can get done so increasingly, we are also looking for people who want to be journalists, who just a journalism degree, but can do some mm -hmm. basic data science graph building and seeing patterns mm -hmm. before they conclude that something is good or bad. I keep telling them, show me a statistical analysis. It can't just be your view on matters. You know? So each, I think maybe start with BCom is my guess because it's a, a roughly 50% of all Indian graduates are in BCom. You know, I know roughly, maybe higher in Gujarat. I know this is at the national level. We can start it at that level, and your okay. organization can and can provide mm -hmm. the teaching skills, and, yeah, and, yeah. and more important, provide the curriculum framing skills. Sure, sure, sure. And, and we, then, we can create a uh, certificate program kind of thing. That's right, and then find the teachers to teach it. Oh don't yes. Don't forget all these are big issues. Huh? You can, yeah. I, I learned yeah. something in working in the national education policy. You can introduce anything you want. But you have to make question, where will you find the teachers to teach it here? So right. th if you right. think it through, they'll be do it in Gujarat first and then we'll see what to take. Right, mm -hmm. right. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, my colleague, uh, Professor Maniklal Das, I have one question for you. Okay. Uh, okay. Maybe. Uh... Manik, go yeah, ahead. Uh, so. Uh, the question is on that same uh, same line that internship portal uh, very uh, very uh, important and uh, need of the hours uh, where we are having a diverse uh, uh, that teaching learning uh, that courses in place uh, technical or non technical but uh, why uh, that is uh, not being implemented so far or where we are lacking if I recall IIT Bombay, uh, say, sometime before they started a project similar line, Ecolabia. And uh, again, that project was supported by uh, that government funding agency. It was, uh, it was running for two, three years, but I do not know the current status. But if I look at, uh, say, industry, say, uh, GSO, Google Summer of Code, at individual level, they are very, very successful. Uh, so they have limited uh, opportunities, but they, uh, their students are more curious and students are participate, participating largely. And that exercise has been, say, regulated, uh, monitored, supervised, implemented very, very successfully. IBM, Microsoft, they are also doing a similar exercise. But at uh, at academics, uh, where a country like us, where we have so many IITs, IIMs, uh, uh, then uh, AIMS, uh, medical, then other government engineering college, NITs, uh, where we are lacking uh, on that aspect, uh, which is very, very important in any, uh, any uh, technical uh, uh, science in any degree program, that internship one, one semester or three semester or one year, uh, why that is uh, where, where we are lacking in, uh, on that side. Though I can see success in NPTEL, SIAM, 
who is uh, are in place in uh, that last 10 years uh, effort by government and uh, other participating uh, that organizations but uh, that should also bring that same component uh, uh, integral component that internship uh, uh, internship is also uh, uh, should also be a part of that uh, effort where we are lacking that not having that a successful internship portal we have to go uh, and in the first 2 3 years make a lot do a lot of leg work to place these students in the as interns we just sit back indian industry is not advanced enough to go and find out and come to you we have to go and market it to them you know i i know in the early days of the i am the effort made to market students uh, you know for example during my tenure about 8 10 years ago we started a uh, analytics course two year analytics program at iim calcutta okay uh, teaching all of this machine learning type things and it was jointly offered by iim calcutta isi calcutta and iit kharagpur now uh, during the two years they started iim calcutta they'll move to the isi campus and learn statistics then they'll move to iit kharagpur and learn programming our programming and come back to i am calculate quick case study studies but the effort we had to spend 5 years to place the students now today you know what it is recruiters come and say we don't want to hire or mbas we want to meet the people who are part of the analytics course and when i was oh, there the student uh, the, the the you know the students in the mba came as a group and represented to me as chairman saying sir please don't allow Uh, you know the companies to come first for the you know the people who are doing the course in analytics but they will never hire us it is change the other way around but i can tell you the effort needed in the first five years i had to personally i in fact some packeted mom that go and meet people in bombay and delhi and calcutta to explain to them what this was for the indian industry people are just learning how to spell analytics and data and all that and trust me at the highest level so the effort is needed like in, like in any pioneering effort you there's an effort to be made marketing effort yeah? right right thank you so uh, i mean yes. one message i can directly pick from this that uh, this knowledge of analytics gives an age to any curriculum so whether yeah. it can be a management curriculum or an economics curriculum or or anything else it can be no, this really important people like doctors and you know lawyers mm -hmm, and commercial mm -hmm. people they also if they don't have the basic knowledge of analytics uh, what we call machine learning type and predictive analytics they will suffer in the next 5 years yeah you do okay. help them help them maybe your institution can be the leader to help all of them and you don't overpack the curriculum do it in a way that you know people don't mm -hmm. get frightened people mm -hmm. go to bcom and people go to M mbbs sometimes are frightened of mathematics i have seen children of that kind make it exciting for them thank you ajit i mean for a wonderful yeah. uh, conversation <laughs> you always uh, yeah. do like that and we really yeah. got a lot of gems and pearls here and there around and yeah. thank you thank you all thank, for thank you very happen. much for calling me uh, so much have uh, a one question oh Please. sure Yeah. Is this Manish? Yeah. No, I have this one question. Suman here. Okay, so first let's take Manish and then uh, Suman. So Manish. No, no. Suman. Your... Uh, basically, I am saying that Suman have a one question. Oh, so fine. Suman yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I have one small uh, query in my mind. You see, I am uh, in uh, uh, engineering education scenario for last almost twenty years. and okay. what i see is that in india most of the engineering education is very much urban centric whether it yeah. is a curriculum internship everything people are actually around the urban areas urban problems urban requirement urban need etc a very few institutes are giving uh, emphasis on the need of the uh, rural india so is there anything in the national new national education policy to cater to the need of rural india through science and technology education 
you know, uh, there were eight, nine committees. I know what my committee did and all the discussions around it. Uh, I, my sense is there was a discussion on it, uh, but I don't know whether any specific things came down. I said, do you have a copy of that full report? It's downloadable from the education ministry side. Have a look at it. Um, but I, I am not qualified to say what all happened in depth in each of the other committee meetings. Huh? So, but you're right. There are some issues of, uh, of rural India that we need to worry about. Okay. But I think uh, we train our students, sorry, just for interrupting. We train our students in all departments, hoping, you know, thinking they will get a foreign degree or a job abroad. And I think we have to change that mindset. It will take a little while. But don't give up. Don't give up. Your passion for doing something in rural, please keep it. Do not give it up because of <laughs> short-term yes, yes. obstacles. Short-term obstacles, we will overcome. We'll, let's keep discussing uh, and we'll find a way. Right, right. Actually, we are happy that uh, we have uh, made a very small uh, attempt in this. From the very beginning of our curriculum uh, in yeah. ICT at uh, Dhruvayamban Institute, we have one month of rural internship mandatory for all the undergraduate students. That's so where we make again. sure that they go to some rural places and try to yeah. understand their problem and whether they can give some solution or can think of some solution of their problems. Yeah, at least you you open their eyes to seeing one part of India which a typical college kid does not look at. No? I know, it's a good thing you're doing. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I think we have one more question, and this is the last question we will take uh, on online, and yeah. then there are many, and we can uh, do that yeah. offline. So it's uh, uh, from Parth. Manish, can you please read out Parth's question? Yeah. So Parth Mehta have been asked, what is the GOI doing to break the silos that each discipline, such as CS, law, medical, law, etc., have created? And unless they start working outside their bubbles, right from university levels, how far can we go? Good question. I think it, what is being made is each of our professions, doctors, lawyers, etc., have truly speaking created their own bubble. You know, and uh, what yep. we have to do the genius, uh, the genius for to, for you guys uh, to demonstrate a genius is when. You create a course which has examples across all of it. For example, when I wanted to teach, uh, you know, in a concept of correlation and regression to this seven standard student in this fisherman school, I used the case of cricketers. So here are these five batsmen, Tendulkar, etc., etc. These are the scores they have made. Who, on an average, is a better cricketer over the last five years? They all jumped in and fought and turned. Then they ask us, sir, how do we know? They say there's a concept called average. There's a concept called standard deviation. They ask me then, sir, yo, what <laughs> kya hai standard deviation? Then I point it out and to how it's done, they learnt it. Because then they can say, oh, you ask who is the better cricketer or in this match. Then they say, this is the average standard deviation. Then the guy who has the lowest standard deviation, the highest average is the best. So if you pick the right examples, which make sense to them, you know, I found that you know, they get, otherwise don't complex it by saying, you know, they, you know yeah. so I, I, I think the way to bridge those little bubbles is to have an example from law, an example from uh, in commerce, you know, across all these, uh, a, a physician, I take, again, going to the example of average and standard deviation, uh, you know, say a doctor checks the temperature of, of a person over the next three days, and this is the temperature, what is his average temperature? Is there a fluctuation that he needs to worry about? And, you know, you taught him the standard deviation is very high. There's a high fluctuation you need to pay. So we have to be creative and create cross-industry example. But the person who answered, asked the question is, you're absolutely right. Uh, we should not have siloed examples. Hmm? We pick so that people, the same course can be appreciated by a Medical aspirant versus a legal aspirant versus whoever it is. Oh, good question. Thanks. Thanks, Ajit. I think uh, 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 the answer from this question. Okay. Yeah. So, Prasenjit, go ahead now. Yeah. 
uh, yeah, actually, to add to this, actually, uh, we also faced a similar thing while talking with lawyers or even in my initial years of research while doing computational linguistics. So linguists mm -hmm. have their own bubble. And yes. it is believed that Paninian grammar is something so heavenly that cannot never be annotated in some form for the machines or something like that. So, I mean, there were very few dialogues, actually, between the two communities. Uh, as of now, yeah. that ice melt yeah. to certain patience, levels. Patience. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, maybe this will happen for, for law and for medicine. But uh, I think situations like COVID, this kind of situations, will drive us to talk together, to talk. This crosstalk yeah. should start. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, In all of this fine. patience, you have to be very patient. You can't yes. do a revolution without patience. Eh? True. 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 Okay. So I would uh, like to request our director, uh, Professor uh, K.S. Dasgupta, to say a few words as a concluding note before we wrap up. So over to Professor Dasgupta and thanks, Ajit, and thank to all my colleague and audience. Thanks. Yeah, it's my privilege to uh, you know hear Professor um, Balakrishnan and the way he explained things uh, has created a lot of uh, questions in our mind and I'm sure you know this I I was excited about the BCom connectivity with machine learning and really speaking uh, Professor Balakrishnan you know we are, yes I once I, um, very recently I had a discussion with there is an institute called Somla uh, uh, they give degree in uh, uh, management and so on and that their director and um, was uh, asking that what way we can help them and uh, uh, and I told that we have very good experts in AI and machine learning, but they don't have, they do a lot of analytics, but their foundations are not strong. So I, I believe what you have told us is basically interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary is the key. And the biggest problem perhaps now is that the way we you know, uh, um, uh, uh, try to deliver the content and also it, uh, sometimes we make it more, uh, um, abstract and things like that. So, but anyway, I, I have a feeling the uh, things will change maybe with your a new education policy. Maybe sometime uh, the faculties will change because uh, of the uh, external forces which make them change. And, uh, and we are very open, Professor Balakrishnan, to have an interaction and to have collaborations, to have a joint program with you, whichever you think right and whether it is in Gujarat uh, related activities or any other activities, because I'm sure that the AI future depends upon what type of expo uh, um, you know, experiments we do, what sort of connectivity, how we break the silos. So uh, I'm delighted uh, to hear your lecture. And I, I feel that sometime when everything becomes normal, you should drop in in our campus. That is point number one. Even if it doesn't become normal, I request uh, I'm presenting to have a webinar for our students, you know, if it is possible um, for a short, you know, because in case of a, a, a online thing, a virtual connectivity, we have to keep the model and um, energy level of the students very high. So if yeah. Professor Balakrishnan agrees and if... Mr. Mr. Balakrishnan. Mr. Malakrishna. Uh -huh. Okay. Professor. <laughs> nee, but you teach in I am, so I call you professor. <laughs> that sense, you know. <laughs> Who teaches is a professor. Uh, so uh, I am very keen that you know our students should hear from you. And uh, so we have a handful of we uh, today we have a handful of students who participate. Yeah, but, I'm saying that we can make a yeah, yeah. but of course, yes, yes, yes. Um, and exclusively uh, for students, we will plan um, something. I, I have a yeah. feeling they should know that besides reading, understanding the problem and analytical skill and ground level knowledge is very, very important. Uh, so oh, yes. I, I request uh, uh, Prasanjit to see whether Professor Balakrishnan's uh, uh, time schedule matches and we can do some amount of, because, you know, ultimately persons like him should be able to motivate the students uh, at the undergraduate level and give certain directions. So they should, don't, uh, they should not jump into programming skill alone, but they should do beyond something. So, but it, it was okay. a good step uh, by AILP team and thanks to all the organizers. And I look forward to have more interactions with uh, uh, Professor Ajit Balakrishnan and uh, that, uh, <laughs> uh, 
Hey, because Mr. I know uh, you are more than a professor, uh, but you know, <laughs> professor is basically giving you some sort of a um, respect. Uh, no, actually, Ajit is a professor of practice, and this is a concept <laughs> which was very new in India, and he was a big proponent, and that changed the whole game. Yes, in yeah. fact. But uh, he's actually telling, if I don't know what is <laughs> happening in history, sitting in my uh, AC room, and AC you know, lab. Uh, again, there is a real disconnect between industry <coughs> and academia. Yeah. And academia thinks that what they think is the right, and industry thinks academia doesn't uh, know what uh, industry needs it. So, a uh, person like you can bridge that. And I'm sure that, you know, uh, we'll have many more interactions and we are open to accept your advice, suggestions, whatever you call. And I seriously think that, you know, our students should uh, listen to you. Thank you, Thank uh, you. Professor Balakrishnan. Thank you. Again, I'm saying Professor Balakrishnan uh, because, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, because, you know, I have seen you in uh, some of the occasions where I told you that uh, in Calcutta and other places. So I'm very much impressed. Uh, and I look forward to have a longer association with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. Much. I request to all, please open your video camera so I can click one photo yeah. together. My yeah. Ahlad, uh, Avik, Ahlad, and what? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye -bye. I'll sign off. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Bye.